And welcome in Irish Nation to the Golden Dawn here on this Tuesday night. Coach Dan Ridden with me, head coach of the Ursuline Irish. And we have Austin Town Fitch this week, coach. First, a big win against Harden last week, a good team that entered the game 3-1, and one, and that was an impressive win against a really good team. Yeah, I thought our kids uh, did a great job starting fast. Uh, you know, we opening kick, we, we tried to surprise onside, almost got it, didn't quite get it, but then our defense held them to a three and out. Um, offense went down, made it 8 nothing right away, and, uh, you know, really never looked back. But, um, you know, I thought we played a very physical football game, and we were very efficient and focused on, on in all three phases. So really proud of the effort. And talking about the defensive phase, of course, a pick six and three or four interceptions off their quarterback, and that that's a – recipe for success you get three or four interceptions you're probably gonna win most games you play yeah we had four interceptions and uh Luke Kolar had two of them and um you know it, I, as you mentioned one went back for a touchdown so so that's awesome anytime you get a defensive score or special team score it goes a long way towards the final result but um you know again I thought I thought our kids were very efficient in all three phases the the um you know, defensively, we had a number of three and outs, but then a couple of times where Harding was threatening to score, we were able to get a stop or get a pick and, uh, you know, stop their effort. And, and kids played a great job. They right. did a great job, I should say. All right, and it seems like every week we're talking about the versatility. And Joe Baylog last week had over 100 yards for the first time this season, I believe. Yeah. And that's something everyone knows he can do. So the fact that he hasn't this year just showing how many guys get touches. Well, that and, and, and the other um, – contributing factor to that I, I mean Joe is a very capable running back but it, you know the reality is is that we played four games in a row that were shortened um you know the Farrell game we we, we were only halfway through right. the second quarter and it was called and, and and the other games uh were all situations where there was a running clock in the second half so you know when you get to that point the second half goes very very quickly um you know that's the first part, piece of it but then the second piece of it is you know, you're starting to sub more guys and, and, you know, the starters might not get as many touches or they don't get as many touches. So, you know, he had more touches the other night and, and he certainly showed what he's capable of doing when given the opportunity. Right, and of course this game <coughs> on Friday probably won't be in the same fashion because it's two really good programs going up against each other. It's great battles in the past. And so all four quarters for all of your guys, what's it going to take to come out with that win? Well, we always talk about tempo with our offense, and we always feel like that's a big contributing factor to our success. Um, you know, the, the thing that goes along with that is is our conditioning, and it's something that we prepare, prepare year-round for. And, um, you know, it's something that our kids, they take a lot of pride in it. So our tempo and conditioning, um, taking care of the football, you, you, you know, having success in the run game is always right. huge. But, uh, you, you know, along with those lines, along those same lines, you know, we need to play good defense. We need to get some three and outs. That They have an outstanding kicker and punter. And, um, you know, he's a weapon, whether he's punting, kicking, kicking field goals, whatever it is. So, um, you know, it's going to take a full team effort all three phases. And, um, you know, we, we need to take care of the put, football, great takeaways, run the football well, stop the run, you know, all those things. Right. And what are some of the things that this Fitch team is going to do really well and maybe some things you guys feel like you can exploit to get that win? Well, they do a really good job running the football. And, and uh you know, they're a little bit different than what they've been maybe the past few years as far as, um, you know, their run-to-pass ratio. Um, you know, but, but but they're really taking a lot of pride in the run game this year and do, doing a really good job with that. Very efficient, good running backs, good quarterback. Um, you know, and their guys up front are playing well. So those are all things that have our attention. We, we And, again, we need to stop the run and create some three and outs, get them, uh, you know, behind the sticks, you, you know, win first down, force them into th some throwing situations and get them out of their game a little bit. What do you feel like you guys might have an advantage at to kind of, you know, put you guys over the edge for the for the game? Yeah, I don't know if we have an advantage, but, um, you, you know, we, we, we're going to try to do what we do. We, you know, we want to play fast. In order to play fast, we have to get first downs. We have to have success on first down. Um, you know, if we play really fast, but it's third and 15, that doesn't do us right. any good. So, um, you know, we need to be efficient on offense in order to do that so we can dictate the tempo of the game. Um, you know, defensively, uh, you know, again, we have to stop their run game and, and force them into some lo longer yarded situations. So, you know, it, it force them to play left-handed, so to speak. Or actually, their quarterback's lefty, so force them to play right-handed from their quarterback's perspective. But, uh, 
you know, force them to throw. And, and, and if we get in some long yard situations, hopefully, you know, we can get some pressure on the on the quarterback and create some takeaways that way. Right. And last week started a stretch where you guys pretty much the rest of the regular season are facing teams that are either big rivals or are rival like games where it's just competitive every time you guys play. And so what's the mindset, of course, the one and no mindset every week, but what's that kind of down the stretch? Are you telling your guys, you know, to get into the, you know, week 15, 16 area, we have to kind of execute well and to do well down, down the stretch of the season? Well, the first thing you said is you're talking about rival games, and, and, and make no mistake about it, we have one rival, and that's Cardinal Mooney right. to talk about anybody else. I should say rival-type games, I yeah. guess, then, in that but, scenario. But I think it's important to note that is to um, – you know, refer to the other games as a rival, is, it, that's disrespectful to the team that actually is our rival. Um, you know, our, our schedule is not a situation where we can look to any one game or circle any one game on a T-shirt like some teams do. Right. You know, we got to show up every single week and, and, and play, you know, our brand of football, execute well, take care of the football, play good defense, all those things I just talked about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it happens to be Fitch this week and whoever it is next week, then we'll worry about that next week. And, of course, the quarterback for Austin Town Fitch, great dynamic athlete. Talk about the run game, but how does he use that, that to his advantage when you have two really good running backs in the backfield? Yeah, they, they, you know, they're similar to us in that way in, the, in that they have a number of guys who can exploit the defense. And, and you know, going back to our, our, you know, recipes for success on defense is get lined up, make, make the adjustments to the formation, play good gap sound defense, understand your responsibility. And when we do that, you know, we play defense at a high level. And, uh, you know, but but going back to their playmaking ability, you know, we have to be gap sound. We have to tackle well. We have to get a lot of guys to the ball and gang tackle and try to create some takeaways, pull the ball out, all those things. Right, and, of course, you see with that interception was his first of the year, which through four games is, is a good mark for a turnover ratio. And overall, you guys t took care of the ball, and you have pretty much every week for the most part. So how important is that? Because, you know, obviously, it's an obvious you have to take care of the ball to win games. But how important is that, especially – the you know the better teams you're facing you know come playoff time and of course the big the big games yeah we always talk about turnover margin and the thing I can tell you it, you know last year and this year combined last year we played 14 games this year so far five and uh, the two games we lost over the past two years we didn't win the turnover margin and um, every game we we won the turnover margin we also won the game so it is critical to our success and. Uh, you know, that's just one of those stats. It's not impossible to win if you lose that, that stat, but it, it makes it significantly harder. Right, and lastly, what's your message to the Irish fans coming out Friday night to Stanball Stadium? Again, just like the past few weeks, be loud. We, we, we need your support. We need a bunch of guys there. I know they're going to bring a big crowd as well. And, um, you know, it should be a great atmosphere. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's going to be a really good football game, two, two good football teams going at it. And, um, you know, all the voices we can have in the stands, we need you. Right, and we'll have that game on YSN from Stanbaugh Stadium at 7 p.m. Old school Steel Valley foes going at it from Stanbaugh Stadium. Coach Reardon, thanks for joining me. We'll see you guys on Friday night under the lights.